everyone, I'm Hayley. I'm always in the craft room and would you look how tidy it is today? I'll come to that in a bit. But what have I been sewing this week? Well, I'm still on my Notches Odell dress. Here it is. And last I spoke to you, I was working on these amazing puff sleeves and you can see one of them is done. One of them has a dangling cuff. But I'm at the point where I can try this dress on. And you guys, this sleeve is everything I hoped it would be and more. Honestly, I just absolutely love it. I've also got the facing in for the neckline. I'll turn it round. This is actually the front of the dress, which is slightly confusing because we're used to things being on the hanger, aren't we? where the back neckline is higher than the front, but not with this one. It's a scoopy low back and the front is slightly higher. And you can see it's not sitting 100% flat. <sighs> I have understitched it, I have pressed it, I've clipped it. It just won't go that last little bit. But you know what, on the body, it is fine. It honestly, it sits really nice and flat and I particularly love with this um, the width of the scoop neck so maybe I've got narrow shoulders I'm not sure but quite often on me with a scoop neck my bra straps end up showing things don't need to shift a lot before yeah you can see a bra strap whereas this seems to come in quite close but then have a really nice scoop so it's not like a scoop scoop, but it's not a crew neck. It's got the shaping of a scoop, but it's high, but not so high that it like feels grabby. Do you know what I mean? I don't like that feeling. So it is, this facing is sitting beautifully at the back. I don't know what I've done differently. Maybe I need to go in and clip some more. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. So I'll hold this up so you can see. The back neckline, I interface the facing, but not the actual neckline. With the front facing, I did do a little strip of villain form band, just to keep that really from getting stretched out. I wonder if that's just adding enough tension that it's not going completely, I don't know. Anyway, there are obviously loads of seams inside this because this puff sleeve is constructed from maybe six panels, I think, a lot. So what I thought I would do if it is problematic is just hand tack the facing down to all these seam allowances that seemed like it would fix it. I don't want to top stitch around here. I just think with all these seams, it might go a bit lumpy bumpy. A lot of people I know have strong feelings on facings versus bindings. I'm kind of, I'm in neither camp. I like some things about each finish. So with a facing, I do love that from the front, it's just so invisible. I think that looks really, really classy and just well made where you just can't see any of the like construction story, I guess. You can't see how it was done. But I absolutely hate fiddling with my clothes. I hate worrying about whether things have flipped out, tucking them in. So that is annoying. If you did a binding on this, I think it would look fine, but I do think you would just lose something with all these seam lines because, I don't know, I just, I love it so much. I don't want to interrupt it with, with stitching. So, yeah, swings and roundabouts. I love that with a binding it definitely stays put, but I like the look you get with a facing. So case by case basis, I'd say for me. The only thing left to do on this is obviously finish the other sleeve, which is literally just apply the binding and hem it. The reason I've not finished this is, as I say this one, I realized something, and this is, this is quite the revelation. 
when I think I'm sewing with a one centimeter seam allowance, I'm not using a one centimeter seam allowance. I'm doing nine mil, which, you know, if you got 90% on a test, you'd be pretty pleased, wouldn't you? But yeah, 90% is not accurate enough when we're sewing, is it? Especially when you've got as many seams as there are on this sleeve. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I'm providing an extra millimeter on each side of each seam, that's 12 mil, that's half an inch that I'm out by the end of it. So when I came to put this cuff on, it didn't fit. I went back and measured my seam allowance. I was one millimeter off on every single seam and that totally accounts for it. And oh, I've thought about why this is. I'm gonna put in a picture of my machine bed and show you where the one centimeter mark is on my machine. I do not find it easy to eyeball it because it's like it almost lines up with the bobbin case but not quite it almost lines up with my foot but not quite if I'm doing 15 mil five eighths of an inch it's so far away I have to use the line on the plate but with one centimeter I can't I just can't get a good line to follow so I need to do something about that on my machine because we have talked before about how things always come out a bit big on me. If I'm using a one centimeter seam allowance, but really sewing it at nine, you know, even if it's just side seams, that's four mil around. If you add a princess seam or a center back seam or a center front seam, it's getting quite a long way out, isn't it? So I need to do something about that. What I would really love is a one centimeter presser foot so that the edge of the presser foot is exactly one centimeter. I suppose the other thing I could do is shift my needle over. Yeah. Anyway, I need to have a think about it in an experiment because it is unacceptable to be sewing with a nine mil seam allowance when you need one centimeter. So what I did on this side is I took up the whole 12 mil at the underarm seam and just created a bigger poof. I thought about going back and doing one millimeter times six, and you know what? It made no difference. If anything, it's just given me a little bit of extra poof, which is what this dress is all about. So that's what I'm gonna do. But if I make it again, I will pay closer attention. I will figure out a way to get a really accurate seam allowance. And I would love a top version of this. It comes with a cutting line for a blouse, and the fit through the body is just lovely. It's it's not tight, but it's close. So when you've got these big statement sleeves, if it was then a boxy fit, I think it would be a bit overwhelming, but I love it. But I don't have any fabric in the stash that's suitable, really. I just think with a viscose, the sleeve will collapse and you, you won't get the full effect. So anyway, I've really enjoyed making that. It's been so much fun just doing a seam, pressing it, overlocking it, doing it, pressing it, overlocking it. The sleeves were just really fun to do, just very mindful, slow kind of sewing. Yeah, I am going to do a full pattern review once I've finished it and worn it for a bit, because you know me, quite often I think I love something, then I wear it a few days and I'm like, no, it's wrong. Quite often I think things are blah and then end up wearing them all the time, like this t-shirt, for example. So, as you'll see, the craft room is super tidy. I know, it's because we've had visitors this week, which is why I didn't finish the Odell dress. I just haven't had a lot of time to sew. But I'm looking down here because when I did tidy up the craft room, I finally found, wait for a zip, um, the stretch lace elastic I was looking for. Do you remember my night dresses? And I wanted to finish the neckline with stretch lace elastic. And I knew I had the perfect colour. How good is that match, considering they're both just out the stash? But I lost it. Anyway, as I was tidying, I just found it buried underneath some other stuff. Put those together. We're not going to lose them again. So I can get that neckline finished. And then... Yeah, I think I'll get started on the backpack I've been talking about for my holiday because we've just had visitors 
this weekend gone. We've got them coming again this weekend coming. I'd like to keep the graft doing pretty tidy. So if I just finish my Odell dress, stitch that on, I think the only machine I need is my actual sewing machine. So I could just get one machine out and yeah, then it's less to put away, isn't it? You might notice something is missing, my cutting table. So the sofa's here, we spin it around when we have visitors and I put it that way when I'm in a crafting mode. And I don't know if anyone's ever spotted this, but my cutting table only has two legs. <laughs> you might have noticed it rocking. Um, I lean it, I lean two, no, I lean one side of it on the sofa and then the other two legs provide the support at the other end because otherwise I don't have room for a cutting table. So that's gone away. I don't know if I'll be getting it out before the next set of visitors arrive. So I might cut out the bag on the kitchen island, bring the bits over and then get started on that. The other crafty project I've been working on, which I promised to show you last week because I forgot to bring it over, is a little crochet top. So why yes, I did make this bag. Just a little like project basket, you can't really see it because it's such a deep navy blue, can you? But yeah, really handy just to have on the floor uh, by the sofa for when I'm crocheting watching telly, there's my hook. And I have been making, it's called the Flamingo Tank. It's a free pattern. Obviously, I can't just follow a pattern. I've been doing my own thing. So it's a basic tank with some lovely lace work. Can you see that pattern starting to emerge? Um, and the way you're instructed to do it is to make up a full front panel with the lace work, full back panel, seam them together at the shoulders, shoulders and at the side seams. And I don't like doing that for three reasons, really. The first one is by the time I finish, finished crocheting something, I'm just so done with it. I don't want to sew it all together. Like, I don't know why that is a step too far, but I really put it off. I hate doing it. The other thing is, I'm not very good at doing it. I can't seem to get a neat, a really neat, like, whip stitch. I've watched a few tutorials on how to do it, hoping for a better way. And I know you can slip stitch it closed, but whatever I've tried, it never looks that good. I probably do just need more practice, but also, if I can avoid doing it, then I will. And the third reason is you can't try things on when you go along if you make them in panels. So I decided to crochet in the round. So it's a bottom up pattern where you normally crochet one panel from the bottom, the other panel from the bottom. I've just crocheted enough stitches for the whole thing in a spiral. This kind of was a great idea, except I got up to this lace work and I was so busy concentrating on getting the lace right that I forgot I have arms. So I just carried on crocheting this tube up and up and up and up. The lace looked really good, but I had to undo it all so that I could do a split for the arm, which I've now done there. And of course, now I'm working with that pattern because yeah, the the pattern was for two panels. So, I don't know, I've kind of lost my way with it a bit. So I was going round and round and round and round and never turning my work. If you're a crochet, you will understand this, that normally you get to the end of the row, chain one or two up, flip your work and then work back. But because I've been going in a spiral, I haven't been turning my work. So when I got to the bit where I had to break for the armhole, I did have to start turning. And then I thought, Am I going to end up with like a weird change in texture? And the answer is, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Can you see there the top four rows from this point I've been turning, but before that I wasn't. I don't think it's really very noticeable. But yeah, it's just typical me where I'm like, I know better than these instructions. I don't want to make two panels. I'm going to do it in the round. And then it becomes apparent why it wasn't done in the round. Anyway, I've tried it on. 
but just when I realized I needed to make space for the arms and I am loving it so far I've been trying on the whole way to make sure that it fits which is obviously the advantage of doing it this way the yarn is a beautiful cotton and silk blend oh, I'm really loving it it's not really got a sheen to it but it's got a should we say a lust, luster, lustra, luster. It's lustrous. I really like it. So now I've figured out what we're doing and kind of back on with that. But yeah, it does take me a while to crochet things, but I really need some plain tops. Thought they'd be nice with these trousers, just navy linen. Um, and also if I get round to making some long skirts that are patterned, a nice plain white top will be perfect so I would really like to get that finished so yeah that's about it for this week I'm sorry I don't have a finished garment to show you again I know we chatted about this last week but you know I have a, a full life a family a job things to do people to see places to go who am I kidding I don't like to leave the house people to see though when they come visit me that's how I like it um but yeah, I hope you're all well. I hope you've all been doing something fun this week and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Hayley. Oh, let's move that over. I think we'll start again. Oh. No, now we're wonky. Oh.